It's been a little over a week since we last talked to Dr. Howard Gluss about the situation we find ourselves in, isolation, quarantine, uh, social distancing. This is all very unnatural, not what we're used to in our lives. Some of us are going a little stir crazy. Some of us are making the best of it. Dr. Howard Gluss, nice to have you back with us. So how do you- It's a pleasure to be here. Week that we've been going through this. Well, I think one of the first things is to play a little bit with the semantics. And what I mean by that is I find there's two groups of people, and yes, this is a very serious situation. I'm not negating that at all. Mm -hmm. But um, there are some people that get lost into the negativity, negativity of it. And then there's another group of people that seem to be resilient during this time, and they're able to find a way to be very creative with the time. What I find is they've gone from a sense of isolation to really calling it a sense of self-reflection. When you use those terms, when we change those terms psychologically, it can create a big change in our, uh, our way we approach things. Uh, Self-reflection is about using this as a time for personal journey, getting creative, doing all those projects that we haven't had a chance to do, calling all those people, we know they're home, <laughs> So calling all those people that we want to connect to. So, because we're going to be here for a while. So we might as well try to find a way to increase our coping skills. So I reached out to my dad today and we talked on uh, FaceTime. Also uh, did a little Zoom call with my, uh, some of my sons and we talked about just whatever was going on in their lives. So the, yeah, this technology allows us to reach out, reach through and connect. Uh, visually, remember the old Dick Tracy watch phone? Remember that thing? Yeah, 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 absolutely. We actually, this actually happened in our lifetimes. This is actually happening. We can do this now, and we should use this technology, right? Yeah, absolutely, because we're social animals, and we survive by attaching. And we can attach, because when we attach through social media, we're also conjuring up those emotions and feelings that we may have for that person. So it replicates that experience. So. I would definitely say take advantage of it. And if you know someone who's older, who may not know how to use it, you know, try to reach out to them and teach them because they don't realize how simple some of it can be. What, are you still communicating with your patients? Are you doing these telehealth things and through the, this medium? And, and what are they telling you? So I have converted my whole practice to telehealth mm -hmm. for everyone's safety, both my patients and myself. And I'm very surprised how well it's working, especially with the visual element in it, and patients are uh, responding in the same way. In some respects, it's as though nothing has changed, except I may be in a dress shirt and have uh, sweatpants on, on the bottom, but that's all they see. But otherwise, uh, I'm saving a lot of time not going to the office. It's a very powerful way to uh, experience people. You know, a lot of the great thinkers who are writing, you know, all kinds of papers and and writing articles that I'm reading online have have a vision of a of a whole new awakening of culture. The way we do things, maybe the way we we work, or the way we interact with people. That uh, this this technology has really now it's now in our face. It's now there, and and this this COVID nineteen has presented a uh, for some a huge problem and consequences that of course no one wants in their family. But it also presents opportunities that we never thought we could get. I think we're just at the beginning of that experience, Carlos, that uh, I was talking to a patient today, and all she kept on saying was how interesting this time has been for her. She runs a big restaurant, mm. and she's finding very creative ways to connect, connect to people that she cares about and loves. And uh, I think, I'm hoping, some very positive things will come out of this too, that we will communicate in different ways and find more efficient ways to communicate, because when you think about it, it's ultimately a choice. We can stay in the negative, or we can try to focus on the positive, and that's going to be a lot more powerful experience. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about loss, because we all feel a sense sure. of loss and fear of loss of life, of loss of jobs, loss of money. We might lose our home. Uh, there's a lot of fear about loss. How do you? How are you? What are you telling your patients about that? I think one of the best ways to deal with loss, what I tell my patients is, you know, we're just at the beginning, especially when it comes to economic loss, people are very concerned about that. And I tell them, you know what, we're all in this together, as I keep saying, it sounds like the government is trying to make a move in a very positive way. 
and understand that people will join and connect and try to find ways to get out of this in a positive way. But especially with loss, uh, there's a sense of longing, of wanting to go back to something that was. And that's, I believe, not going to be. We're going to have to reinvent the new future, our new sense of self, our new sense of the future. So try to focus on that. Try not to catastrophize, get into very negative places about it. Take some deep breaths and understand that we're all working on this collectively. Uh, one of the tools you gave me in the last interview that we had a, a little over a week ago, you asked uh, that, that people get into a routine and figure out a routine. So I took your advice and I started doing similar things every single day. So I get up, first thing I do is make my bed and then I go through my you know, routine to, to, to get ready for the day and not, not be slovenly, not sitting around and just be sloughing all day long in my jammies. I, I really felt that the need to or, you know, kind of organize my day through the, the whole day. Uh, and that's worked. And, and I think people should do that. Absolutely. You know, it's worked for myself, too, getting a sense of normalcy. The first week caused it was like we were all punched in the stomach and we were scrambling. Yeah. That's what trauma is about. We're trying to figure out where, where we're going to land. Now we're starting to get a sense of using uh, social media as a way of connecting. I did a gym class today. I did it online. And it was great. You know, it was like, okay, this is. I'm going to do this. This is giving me a sense of normality. When crises like this happen, that sense of absolutism, that's what we call that we thought the world was going to be a certain way, and suddenly it's not. It's very different. We have to get adjusted to it. So routines are very important. They calm us down. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like a really bad dream, and at some point we're going to it's come surreal out It's surreal right now. It's very surreal. We're trying to make it real. Yeah, and you know, uh, the only time, because we've been isolated in our home, we haven't been outside, I haven't gone, I mean, I go outside to get some fresh air in the front yard or the backyard, but I haven't gotten in my car and gone anywhere, so I don't know what it's out, like out there, and so the only connection I have is through the TV to hear what the president has to say, or what Mayor Garcetti may have to say, or Gavin Newsom has to say, and what the doctors are saying, and so I'm getting it artificially, and so uh, to me, that that sense of isolation is starting to close in on me and I, I don't like it. Well, what about connecting to the people that you're living with too right now? I know that you're living with other people right now. Yeah, with so my daughter and husband and, and your and my daughter and They're her great. husband. They're great. Yeah. What? They're great. I mean, I've got a whole new relationship with them. They're, well, they're, that's it. I mean, use this yeah. time to reconnect because we're always so busy. I feel like we've gone on this, uh, you know, collective stop. Like the universe is telling us, stop. Everyone's got to stop right now and re-examine their lives. I've had patients with children who said, I haven't spent this much time with my child in a very long time. I'm starting to connect to them in different ways. So cabin fever is what you're mentioning. It's a very big thing. So I, I think one of the best ways to use is use the technology to reach out to people, to talk to people, and under, you know, I've had patients say it's not the same thing. And I accept that. I go, no, it's not the same thing. But it's the best we have. So let's try to make it work. Well, let's try to continue to make it work. Dr. Howard Glass, I appreciate so much the tools you've given us, the great advice. And I wish you to, to, to continue to, to be well and to stay safe and to continue to provide us the, the needed re resource. You're, you're a great person to talk to, and I appreciate it so much. And, and I appreciate you reaching out, too. One last thing what I tell all my patients is want to use this time to figure out how you're going to be a better person. <laughs> how you're going to be of service to people. How you're going to be able to reach out. Because that's ultimately going to make you feel great. And speaking of reaching out, how do we get in touch with you? D-R-H-O-W-A-R-D-G-L-U-S-S dot -S com. My number is 213-935-9712. And um, I'd be happy to respond to any questions anyone has. Well, we appreciate you being available. So nice to talk with you. Thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, it's my pleasure. Take care, Carlos.